So when the network is unreliable, the clients retry the APIs to ensure completion. This approach works when there are fewer clients. But what happens when there are millions of them? Every single client will keep on retrying until the API is completed. This will bombard the server with the request and this problem is called as a thundering herd problem. And in this video, we understand what this problem is, why it occurs and how to solve it. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year and a half now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue at all. Instead, a small focused group of 50 to 60 engineers will be brainstorming the systems and designing it together. This way, we build a very solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course is enrolled by 800 plus engineers spanning 12 cohorts and 12 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The course is focused on building systems the way they are built in the real world. We will be focusing heavily on building the right intuition so that you are ready to build any and every system out there. We will be discussing the trade-offs of every single decision we make just like how you do in your team. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toy load balancer to Crickbus's live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale. In all, we would be covering roughly 28 systems and the detailed curriculum split week by week can be found in the course page linked in the description down below. So, if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course and the second one is the recorded offering. The live cohort based course happens once every two months and will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to learn and want to binge learn system design, I would recommend going you for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss the systems and its design live with me and the entire cohort. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhani.me slash masterclass. I repeat arpitbhani.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I've also put the link of this course page in the description down below and I'm looking forward to see you in my next cohort. So say user A makes an API call to the backend and because of some network issue, the API call failed. Now, in such situation, what do we typically do? Here, we typically retry in order to recover from intermittent failure. So that in case there is a network glitch, some TCP connection broke in between or something like that happened and assuming that our APIs are either potent in nature, what do we do? We automatically retry the API call until it is successful. But now, how do we retry? A naive way to do it is, hey, let's say we have a retry factor of three, which means that in case the API call fails, we try three times before we say, hey, the API call failed. So let's say we write a loop as simple as for i equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, do it. And do it is the one which is making the API call. Now, when this happens, this approach works fine when you have fewer clients. Right. But what happens at scale at scale when you have millions of clients and let's say the server was a little overwhelmed because of which the API call failed for all the clients. Now, every single one of the connected client saw that failure and it is making the API call to recover from the intermittent failure. And now what happens? The server, which is now also get which now anyway gets the new request is now getting this other request, which is retries. The server, which was already overwhelmed with the request coming in, now gets far more requests because of the retries that we are doing. So server does not get time to recover. Like for example, let's say the server was like, let's say the API call was requesting a lot of CPU, was, was, was doing a bunch of CPU computation. The server was overwhelmed because of retries, a large number of requests are coming in. The server is not even getting time to recover, right? Because of which, Although the retries that we defined were supposed to recover from intermittent failure are the root cause of this server not getting time to recover. So the outage prolongs, right? And this is a classic problem that comes when we don't implement retries properly. Now here, how do we solve it? If this doesn't work, how do we solve it? Here, given that the for loop that we wrote in order to retry is as simple as i equal to zero, i less than three, i plus plus do it. Because you may think that, hey, because we are making this retries back to back, this is becoming the problem. 
So what do we do? Instead of making back to back retries, let's say we add some back off, right? The most common way to do it is an exponential back off in which what we do instead of immediately retrying, right? We add some buffer in between, which is exponentially spaced out. For example, let's say at time t, we saw the error. The first retry that happens, it happens at t plus one. The second retry that happens, let's say if that also fit, the second retry would happen at t plus two, right? The space is one. Then the next retry would happen at t plus four, then t plus eight, then t plus 16. So you, here you see that we are exponentially waiting for a longer duration as the number of retries increase. We wait for a longer enough duration before we make the next retry. Now what this allows the server, now here because there is enough space between two retries, the server gets time to recover. That's the idea, right? So here what we are doing is we are trying to give server enough time to auto recover because of issues, right? But this is a problem, right? Although this looks like a solution, now just imagine at this very instant time t equal to t, we saw like millions of people or millions of clients saw this error at this exact same time or even in the range, like in a, in a smaller range of time on the, uh, in a smaller range of time around that. Now what would happen is because the exponential back of what we wrote is t, t plus one, t plus two, t plus four and so on and so forth. The subsequent retries would also nearly coincide. So what we are actually looking at is the server still does not get enough time to recover because there is a large number of because all the clients who saw error near that same time duration are are retrying at the equal spaced repetition this is the problem right now you would actually see this in action by the way uh, if you are using gmail or slack and when the internet goes away you could see that, hey, you are retrying in two seconds, then four seconds, and then you have a button to do retry now and which you can click and it immediately retries. But you can see that timer going exponentially, uh, like it is increasing exponentially. It says, that, hey, now I'll retry in 20 seconds. Now I'll retry in 25 seconds, now 30 seconds, right? So it, it increases exponentially in order to ensure that the server is not bombarded, right? And this is a good way to do it. But this has a problem as we, talked about because of a lot of people or a lot of clients who are retrying or who saw the error at, at nearly same time, their periodicity of retries would coincide, giving or rather putting a large number of or, or a huge pressure on the server at spaced time, right? That's the problem. So how do we solve it? So the uh, better way to do this, so exponential back off, we all agree is a good approach. But the problem is with is with retries coinciding. Solution to that is let's say we add some randomness. So instead of retrying immediately, let's say we add some jitter, a random jitter, right? So instead of retrying at immediately one plus like one, two, four, eight, sixteen, what we do is we add some jitter. Now this is a random value that is chosen in some range, and you wait for that time before you retry the jitter that you add would ensure that there are fewer coincidences that are happening around retries. And this would almost space out the repetitions or the retries that you are making on the server, giving server enough time to recover, given that there is not a huge spike of request coming in because of retries. And this breathing space would allow your server to recover. So as a golden rule, what we can do is whenever we are writing retries on our APIs, first thing that we have to ensure is first you add random jitter, right? Instead of like immediately retrying back to back, you add random jitter and your spaced or the retries are exponentially backed off. It's extremely important that whenever you are writing a retry logic, you follow these two things. This would ensure that in case your server, in case the error is intermittent and your server can auto recover, your server would not be bogged down by a large number of retries, but instead it would have time to auto recover. Right? And this is a thundering hurt problem and a way to solve it. And this is almost the standard approach 
but in most cases we don't typically do it so if you are writing your own retry logic ensure that you are adding random jitter and your retries are exponentially backed off right and on the comments i or in the description of this video i have added a few resources that would help you understand this in a little more granularity if you wish to but uh, in general just keep this thing in mind that whenever you are retrying or when you're writing your retry logic you follow these two steps right and yeah this is all what i wanted to cover uh, i hope you found it interesting i hope you found it amusing and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton